Teaching Point Series 2. Coming to the first case, 26 year female with issue of headache, tingling and numbness in lower limbs, all the limbs. Here you can see there is crowding of the structures at the level of foramen magnum. Even there is effacement of the pre-medullary pre cistern and effacement of the CSS space between the medulla and the cerebellum. These are the reference normal images where you can see the CSS spaces are clearly visualized around the medulla and the cerebellum. So whenever you see this type of imaging features in actual planes where there is crowding of structures, definitely suspect tonsillar herniation and take sagittal weighted images and even wall spine screening images. So here this is the sagittal weighted images, sagittal images where you can see there is herniation of the tonsil below the basin of piston line and even there is syrinx in the wall spine screening confirming the diagnosis of Arnold Curry malformation 1. So what are the teaching points uh, where we can suspect uh, tonsillar herniation on axial planes are effacement of the prepoint and premedullary systems, effacement of the CSS space between the brainstem and cerebellum, vertical orientation of folia towards the foramen magnum, normally the folia are horizontal and they are pointing away from the foramen magnum, anterior inferior displacement of brainstem, medial deviation of the vertebral arteries close to brainstem. These are the features which give clue to uh, tonsillar herniation on axial planes. Next case, 52 year female came with history of low backache and bilateral lower limb weakness since one month. You can see there is edema at T2 level on multiple levels in the spinal cord. Even there is crowding and crumping of nerve roots in the cord equina. Uh, on so we have suspected there is some lesion and we have uh, we have given contrast so this is the post contrast images where you can see there is thick sheet like leptomeningeal enhancement and there is a enhancing nodular lesion uh, along the dura so whenever you see see this thick sheet like leptomeningeal enhancement definitely suspect sugar coating or zuccargas appearance here also you can see there is thick sheet like enhancement in the sacral region so this is sugar coating or zuccargas appearance is seen in drop metastasis from the primary brain tumors or in leptomeningeal carcinomatosis so in this case uh, they, there was a history of breast carcinoma treated three years back so this is a case of leptomeningeal carcinomatosis so what is this sugar coating or zuccargas appearance? This sugar coating is nothing but fine granular sugar over candies or cakes. So we will try to see what are the cause for sugar coating or zuccargas appearance. So we have tried, we have screened the brain in this case. Uh, there are no primary tumors in this case. So this sugar coating or zuccargas appearance can be seen in leptomeningeal carcinomatosis where, the, where there may be history of breast carcinoma, lung carcinoma, melanoma, lymphoma, leukemia and sometimes in drop metastasis so we have to screen the brain also. The primaries which cause drop metastasis with sugar coating appearance are glioblastoma, medulloblastoma, peanut, ependioma, germinoma and choroid plexus carcinoma. So what are all the differential diagnosis for the sugar coating or zuccargas appearance are leptomeningeal infections or inflammation, post-surgery lumbar puncture, arachnoiditis, Guillain-Barre syndrome, neurosarcoidosis, spinal AVM or AVFs and this is a rare tumor you remember diffuse leptomeningeal glioneural tumor where there will be uh, leptomeningeal uh, ca carcinomatosis like features and also there will be multiple subpalsis in the brain and spine. Next case, you can see there is a lobulated calcified mass projected over the right upper zone. But in this frontal radiograph, we are not sure whether this mass is from the rib or from the scapula or within the lung or from the soft tissues. So whenever you have a doubt uh, like these cases, in these cases, definitely take a lateral view or a lateral oblique views. Here clearly you can see this is the bony uh, mass, which is a pedunculated bony mass with thick cartilaginous cap arising from the scapula. And this is the clinical re clinical picture. So this is a case of a, a pedunculated osteochondroma with probable uh, malignant or sarcomatous transformation basing upon this cap. So always take lateral or lateral oblique views whenever you are not able to delineate uh, mass lesions in the frontal radiographs. 26 year male with history of intermittent cough and occasional chest pain. Here you can see there is a hyperinflated lung field or lung zone in the right lower lobe. Uh, we will try to see the uh, lung window of the same case. Here you can see this is the dilated bronchus or bronchiole which is terminating abruptly and distal to that this is the hyperinflated lung zone. So whenever you, the, we will try to see other case also, this is the dilated bronchus or bronchiole with which is proximal to it and there is distal hyperinflated lung zone. So whenever you see a proximal tubular shaped uh, opacity or dilated bronchus or bronchiole which is terminating into a hyperlucent hyperinflated lung field, definitely suspect bronchial atresia. 
Next case, 52 year male with history of surgery two weeks back. There is swelling of lower limbs and he came to ER with sudden dyspnea, tachycardia, chest pain and hemoptysis. So definitely by the history only you can suspect there is pulmonary thromboembolism. So here this is the CT pulmonary angiogram where you can see this is the mediastinal window where you can see this is the filling defects noted in the right main pulmonary artery and also in the segmental branches. However, there is a wedge shaped opacity peripherally placed uh, and there is also pleural effusion. So whenever we are in a doubt whether this is a consolidation or pulmonary infarct. So whenever you see a wedge shaped opacity with um, base towards the pleura and apex pointing towards the hilum or vessel with multiple cystic or bubbly lucencies. These are the multiple cystic or bubbly lucencies. Definitely suspect pulmonary infarct more than a consolidation. So what are all the points which favor uh, pulmonary infarct over consolidation or peripheral consolidation like area which is wedge shaped. And there is a thrombosed vessel pointing towards the opacity. There will be no air bronchograms. There is no significant enhancement on contrast. And there will be multiple bubbly or cystic air lucencies within it. So these are the points which favor pulmonary infarct over consolidation. Next case, 62 year female with a chronic headache, ataxia since 2 years. You can see these are the actual T2 weighted images. There are multiple cystic uh, areas uh, with our CSS signal intensity noted in along the occipital bone which are scal causing scalloping of the occipital bone and also they are not extending beyond the outer table. Uh, here you can see these are the cystic spaces in the occipital bone. They are completely suppressed on flare. They are not showing any significant blooming on GRE. So whenever you see these type of images in the midline and the paramedian location against the cerebellum in an elderly with no history of trauma, definitely suspect arachnoid granulations or arachnoid diverticulae in the occipital bone, which is called as cadob. So this is cadob is nothing but cluster of arachnoid diverticulae in the occipital bone. Next case, 35 year female came with history of sudden onset of severe headache and vomitings with no history of trauma. You can see there is a flare, sulcal flare hyperintensity and, a, and flare hyperintensity collection in the basal cisterns along the sylvian fissure, even in the folia, even in the bilateral cerebra cerebral hemispheres. And also this uh, flare hyperintensity collection in the sylvian fissure is showing significant blooming on GRE. And also there is a nodular uh, blooming area along the right MCA. So this was a case of diffuse SAH probably due to a, a, a rupture of the aneurysm arising from the M2 segment of right MCA. So what is this sulcal flare hyperintensity? We will try to see what are the causes and what is dirty CSF appearance. So this is that uh, dirty CSF appearance is nothing but there will be mild increase in CSF signaling on on unenhanced even weighted images and mild decrease on T2 weighted images. So what is this subarachnoid flare hyperintensity which we will try to see the causes. These are the pathological and artifactual causes. Most common causes are hemorrhage, even exudates, basal exudates in TB meningitis, leptomeningeal carcinomatosis, even moya moya disease and sometimes there will be in rupture of dermoid or lipoma we can see this uh, sulcal flare hyperintensity. Some artifactual causes like hyperoxygenation therapy even after uh, gadolinium administration due to blood brain barrier disruption and sometimes flow, CSF flow artifacts, vascular artifacts or magnetic susceptibility artifacts. So these are all the causes of subarachnoid flare hyperintensity. Next case, 26 year female came with history of fever, seizures and vomitings. This was a suspected case of meningitis. Here this is the actual flare images where you can see there is edema, gyral edema in the right peritoxpital lobes. So we have advised uh, T1 weighted post contrast images. So these are the post contrast images where you can, where is, there is no obvious uh, abnormal pile or vascular enhancement or gyral enhancement. So but still there is suspicion of meningitis and the CSF was pointing towards the meningitis. So we have taken a post contrast flare sequence. So delayed post contrast flare sequence typically showed the gyral enhancement, abnormal gyral enhancement and even a uh, there is a abnormal even meningeal enhancement in the right peritospital lobes. So definitely take a post contrast flare sequence in suspected case of meningitis where T post contrast even weighted images are not useful or not have given any clue for meningitis. So, uh, so what is the teaching point is contrast and flare sequence has more sensitivity and specificity than post contrast T1 weighted sequences in suspected case of meningitis. So always take post contrast flare sequences whenever you suspect sulcal pathologies or leptomeningeal pathologies than post contrast T1 weighted images. So we will try to see other other useful features of post contrast flare sequences. It can be also used in detection of meningeal enhancement in leptomeningeal carcinomatosis. It will be helpful in detecting leptomeningeal angiomatosis in Strasweber syndrome. Even leptomeningeal abnormalities in rheumatoid arthritis with CNS involvement. 
even it is more uh, sensitive than uh, t1 vector images in pathological enhancement of the canalicular and anterior seg genu segments of facial nerve and facial palsy even focal focal cortical or leptopharyngeal enhancement in patients with seizures with non ketotic hyperglycemia and also in post operative or post surgery cases and in acute or chronic head injuries it will better depict dural enhancement and also sometimes it is more uh, favorable in uh, uh, better depiction of the extraaxial mass lesions with and better demarcation of the dural tail than t1 weighted images so these are the two journals and other journals where we ha i have uh, conglomerated these points which can also be useful for you to in writing uh, theory exam also next case uh, this uh, you can see there is a multiple dense shaped sclerotic bands at center of vertebral end plates and also there is bone in bone appearance so we are confused whether this is a rugger jersey spine or a sandwich type of vertebra i prefer this as a sandwich type of vertebra because uh, these dense sclerotic bands are at center of vertebral end plates and there is a central bone in bone appearance so here the clue is central bone in bone appearance diffuse increased bone density which favors sandwich vertebra over rugger jersey spine so these are the dense sclerotic bands at center of the vertebral end plates and this is the bone in bone appearance so this was a case of type 2 autosomal dominant osteopetrosis Uh, what is rugger jersey spine so this is other case of rugger jersey spine where you can see there is a uh, dense alternating uh, sclerotic and lucent zones and there will be no bone in bone appearance and there will be most of the times there is variable bone density sometimes even there will be diffuse bone de de bone density variable bone density or even osteop osteoporosis so rugger jersey spine is nothing but uh, alternative sclerotic and lucent zones which resemble the jugger rugger jersey and it it is co most commonly seen in renal osteodystrophy and even secondary hyperparathyroidism of chronic renal failure other differentials can be pages disease osteopetrosis uh, even severe osteoporosis with uh, compression fractures thank you all